Hey all, and welcome to another video of Ask the Prof. This is the third video in the run series that I've been doing. If you remember, the first video broke down my run form. The, the second video dealt with the glute activation issue I'm having on, having on the right side. And this video is gonna cover the hip flexor and the tightness that I'm having and what I'm doing to specifically address it. So if we look at some still shots for my run, it looks like compared bilaterally, the left and the right are getting about the same amount of hip flexion on both sides. And we took a, take a look at another angle, you can see a little bit in the back uh, of a difference. And this is the difference that we're gonna be talking about today. This is really exasperated more when you look at the pelvis specifically. When my left leg is extended backwards, the pelvis stays relatively level, but when the right leg is backwards, the pelvis then becomes tilted forward. The reason that the pelvis is tilting forward is basically because my hip flexors aren't allowing the extension. So in order to get the same movement bilaterally, I have to essentially get that extension from my back by ex getting uh, extension in the lumbar back rather than the hip flexor allowing that motion like it does on the left side. So let's take a quick look at the anatomy here. So as you can see here, there are about there are nine muscles that are gonna help with hip flexion. Most of these are gonna be assisters or only gonna cause hip flexion if your hip is in a certain angle. The ones that we're gonna focus on primarily are the iliopsoas or the iliacus and the psoas major and minor. So here you can see the iliopsoas muscle with all the other hip flexors stripped away. You can see it's quite large and it has origins or start points that might be surprising if you're not really good with your understanding of anatomy. So the psoas major and the psoas minor actually have an origin on the facets of your lumbar spine and the iliacus is obviously uh, inside the iliac crest or inside the hip bone at, for its origin and then both are gonna come together and have an insertion across the hip joint onto the femur. So obviously I'm gonna discuss the iliopsoas here in regards to what's going on and what I'm trying to address specifically with my run form, but it definitely carries over into any, any other sport. Swimming, for example, especially when you go from swimming into a pool to swimming in a wetsuit in a race, all of a sudden you go from swimming with your you know, relatively flat, or a lot of times if you're a runner especially, your hips are a little bit lower in the water to a wetsuit, which brings you up, so you're swimming with a little bit more extension. So that can cause some low uh, back pain, uh, especially in racing. Another uh, situation where a tight hip flexor can cause problems is on the bike. You sit in this crunched up position for the entire race or the, the entire time that you're on a bike. And so when that tightens up, that hip flexor can start to get irritated. And as you saw in the previous um, graphic, the origin is on the low, low back or on the spine. And so that can cause a lot of the low back pain that we get, especially when riding an arrow, is because of hip flexor tightness and not necessarily an issue with the low back. It can certainly be related to the low back, um, but this can also be one of those areas as well. So what we're gonna do next is uh, show you what I'm doing from a uh, mobility and movement standpoint to try to help address my issue, especially on that right side with the hip flexor. Again, this is specifically what I do before a run, but the, the general concepts can be carried over to just any sort of hip flexor maintenance issues. So for my normal routine, I wanna go through kind of a three-step process. Step one is release. We want to get the iliopsoas to release it, to relax itself. Step two is to stretch or mobilize, and then step three is activation. All right, so step one, again, is the release. Many of you have probably had uh, an iliopsoas or a psoas relief or release when you went to a massage therapist or something like that. I'm really trying to accomplish the same thing. I just don't wanna have to go to somebody else every time I need to get it done or every time I'm gonna go for a run. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the hypervolt uh, on the area I'm not gonna show you because you've probably seen it before, but just use it on the area. I'm gonna start with a broader uh, tip and then move to a more trigger point one. And the goal here is just to desensitize it a little bit. All right, so um, you know, 30, 40 seconds with each one, so about 90 seconds total. And that's really just all I need. Again, just trying to, to help 
desensitize and help relax things a little bit. So for the release part of it, I've actually been using this little tool called the hip hook and I'll include the link below so you can check it out for yourself. But what this allows you to do is basically do a uh, iliopsoas release. And I'm sure you've gone to a massage therapist and heard of a psoas release. Well, so often they do a psoas release, but they don't actually release the iliacus as well. And you need to be able to do both. And you can do the psoas with uh, like a medicine ball or something like that, or, or a, a, maybe a, a lacrosse ball. But to get the iliacus, that's where this little hook comes in. All right, so if you can picture back to the diagram that I showed before, when this is lying down, that can point up and get to the psoas, which goes all the way up to the spine. And when you push it over, you can see how it's gonna hook around, hip hook, hook around and get to the inside of that iliacus. All right, so basically, we just wanna lay straight down on it, okay? And this is, again, going to be into that psoas region. And you want to lay here. It's going to be uncomfortable for the first couple of seconds. We desensitized it a little bit already, but you're still going to get that initial Golgi, Golgi tendon organ response. And so after about 10 to 15 seconds, that's going to go away. And then it'll actually start to feel quite good. So once you've been here for about 30 to 45 seconds, then you want to press down and that's going to allow that hook to work inside and get into the iliacus, okay? And you can easily find out if you're on the hip flexor muscles by just driving your knee into the ground. That's gonna engage the hip flexors and you can feel that, yep, okay, it's right there. I'm on the hip flexor. I'm going to allow it to relax a little bit. So I'm on the psoas now, push down, and that's gonna drive it into the iliacus. The important thing is to remember to relax and con to continue to breathe while you're doing this. That's gonna just help everything then release. It's really important to release both the psoas and the iliacus in order to get um, proper function. If you only do one, then it's probably gonna just um, tighten up right away again or very shortly after. So the next thing that we're going to do is, mobile, is try to mobilize or stretch the um, hip flexor, okay? So my favorite hip flexor stretch is called the couch stretch. That's why I'm doing this video right here next to the couch. And so basically, it's pretty simple. If I'm worried about my right side here, I am going to just put my foot up on the couch and start with drawing my butt to my heel. All right, this is primarily going to be a quad stretch. All right, but you'll, it will help uh, stretch the rectus femoris, which is a double joint muscle, so it does do the hip flexion as well. All right, so I'm gonna start here. Again, about 20 to 30 seconds. Then when I wanna get more into the hip flexor, I'm going to drive my hips forward, okay? And again, this is really easy to think that you're getting more hip flexion than you actually are because if you're paying attention, as soon as I start to draw forward, what's happening is a lot of this motion is coming from my back. So you wanna, the cue you wanna think about is trying to tuck your tail, all right, as you come forward. So then you're stretching your hip flexor and not just getting motion out of your low back. Getting this motion out of the low back is exactly what I'm doing when I'm running, and that's what I want to avoid doing, so I wanna really work on addressing the hip flexor. Another way that you can make sure that you're not just getting this motion from your low back is to come reach down with the hand that on the same side that you're stretching and then try to drive the hip straight down to that hand and again you'll feel that right here in the hip flexor a little bit in the quad still too but that's primarily going to be in the hip flexor okay the next thing we're going to do is activate so we've released mobilized now we need to activate there's a ton of different ways that you can do this i'm going to show you a couple that I like to do or that coach Kevin throws into my strength routine on a regular basis but again there's a ton of different ways that you can just work the muscle itself and then going out and doing the drills is going to do this as well all right but one is to take just a normal uh, slider set it down okay and what we're gonna do is just work on using the hip flexor to bring that back up from under us 
All right, again, we're keeping our tail tucked, so we're not using our back to drive that forward. We're trying to do it all with the hip flexor, okay? Another easy thing to do is just stationary marching or kind of simulated running, but we're putting pressure down on the hip flexor, or on, on, down on the knee, causing the hip flexor to activate that way. So we just come up, push down, do the same thing on that side. You can see I have the balance of a baby giraffe. That still hasn't changed. All right. And then another way is, again, just using a super band or a TheraBand of some sort to come here, hands on the hips. Same thing. So we're, we're activating this hip flexor region. So now I've shown you what I'm doing for both the glute activation issue as well as the hip flexor tightness issue. It's important to keep in mind that these two things aren't independent of each other. One is definitely linked to the other. What we know is that hip flexor tightness can definitely cause glute medius inhibition. And so if I'm doing the hip flexor work diligently and trying to keep that open enough and keep that released, then that should just help the glute activation. And on the same side, if I'm not worrying about the hip flexor, if I'm just trying to address the glute issues, then I'm just gonna be wasting my time because it's constantly gonna be inhibited by the tight hip flexors. So they have to be both done together. Hope you've enjoyed these videos. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button to see what I have coming up next.